All right. Welcome, everybody, to the first Energy and Resource Update episode of 2020, covering, as per always, any changes of the week pertaining to energy and natural resources, oil, gas, minerals, mining. So if you're even remotely interested in energy and mining and natural resources and anything of the sort, then please subscribe and click the bell icon and stick around here, because then this is definitely a channel for you, and also for anyone long-time or new who wants to support me both here and in real life, my paypal.me is down in the description below. Anyone who donates anything between now and some arbitrary time in April will get your name painted on some cheap plastic easter eggs. But regardless, let's now go down the usual set of weekly data. U.S. oil production remains at 12.9 million barrels per day. I'm expecting it before the end of this year to get up to 13.6. U.S. oil consumption dropped a bit from the previous week, down to 19.9 million barrels per day. The individual product numbers within that being gasoline consumption, 8.96 million barrels per day. Diesel fuel consumption dropping all the way down to 3.05. Jet fuel consumption rising back up to 1.97. And propane consumption coming in at 1.28 million barrels per day equivalent. And on the global scale, global jet fuel consumption for the week U.S. jet fuel consumption included averaged 5.1 million barrels per day. And U.S. crude oil inventories took their biggest drop in a long time, decreasing by over 11 million barrels over the course of the week. And oil prices over the course of the week were between $61 and $64 per barrel, primarily climbing most of that distance at the very end of the week after the most recent incident in the Middle East. On the natural gas side, again, all we have is the storage data update because the EIA is not returning to weekly natural gas data updates until January 9th. So U.S. natural gas storage inventories decreased down to 3.19 trillion cubic feet in storage. In comparison to normally by this time, they are still up at 3.23, and last year they were already down at 2.71. And natural gas prices over the course of the week fell from around $2.25 per thousand cubic feet down towards $2.10. And the U.S. active drilling rig count took a double-digit drop and has now gone below 800 actively drilling rigs, down just a bit less than 300 from the nearly 1,100 actively drilling rigs that the U.S. was at a little over a year ago back in 2018. And I was able to get a hold of some data that I did not have before. I now found data on the UK's crude oil storage inventories. And it looks like the UK has been hanging around 80 or so. Their inventories were increasing a little bit, up to 82 million barrels, 84 million barrels. And then most recently, they've been drawn down to 80 million barrels flat. And we've already had our first oil and gas discovery of the year. Another natural gas field discovered offshore of Northwest Australia. The accompanying condensate with that natural gas field estimated in at about 66 million barrels. So, so far for 2020, discoveries are in at 66 million barrels up on the board. Now we have the plethora of international monthly oil production data from most nations. Azerbaijan continuing in its one-up, one-down pattern, falling with the previous month's data down to 758,000 barrels per day, this time coming back up to 763,000 barrels per day. Argentina, after climbing up to 519,000 barrels per day, dropped a tiny bit down to 517,000 barrels per day. And Australia, after reaching 384,000 barrels per day, declined a bit down to 375,000 barrels per day. Brazil, after almost hitting 3 million barrels per day, getting up to 2.99, dropped back down a little bit, down to 2.93. Cameroon increased from their former plateau of 69,000 barrels per day up to 72,000 barrels per day. And the interior African nation of Chad maintains its current plateau of 128,000 barrels per day. Over in South America, Colombia after going up towards 900,000 barrels per day again, had fallen back down again, and has now risen back up a bit again to 883,000 barrels per day, and this time 
coming up one higher to 884,000 barrels per day. Equatorial Guinea, back over in Africa, long on their terminal decline, had climbed back up for a little bit, up to 171,000 barrels per day, but has now begun slipping back down again to 166, and then this time to 156,000 barrels per day. Ghana had gotten up to 218,000 barrels per day, but since has slipped down, down to just over 200,000 at 203,000 barrels per day. India maintains its gradual, very classic-looking terminal decline slope, continuing to drop from 667 down to 662, and now down to 658,000 barrels per day. Indonesia, after declining from its peak, had been holding on between 700 and 800,000 barrels per day. In the last data release, they had taken a sudden plunge down to 659,000. This time, they're back up to a flat 700,000 barrels per day. Kazakhstan, after getting up to 1.94 million barrels per day, has taken a bit of a tumble, as they usually do, down to 1.83, and now down to 1.8 million barrels per day. Malaysia's oil production had taken a sudden drop down to 499,000 barrels per day. Last date release, it was back up to 545. This time, it's back up to 570. Oman, still maintaining their plateau in the 970s, a bit under a million barrels per day. This month in particular, coming in at 973,000 barrels per day. Qatar, still holding flat at 1.52 million barrels per day. Pakistan is up to and holding flat at 92,000 barrels per day. Papua New Guinea is still holding their little plateau of 51,000 barrels per day. And now looking at data for Sudan and South Sudan, back when they were the single nation of Sudan, they were producing about half a million barrels per day, roughly. However, neither one of them has really been able to recover since the split. Their combined total is uh, only about half of what it used to be. Sudan's oil production is on a plateau just under 80 at 79,000 barrels per day. And South Sudan has the more impressive number at a plateau of about 180,000 barrels per day. Thailand continuing to hold their oscillating plateau, going from 238,000 barrels per day down to 221, now back up to 226. Trinidad and Tobago declining again on their terminal decline from 60,000 barrels per day down to 59 and now down to 58. Barely above their own domestic consumption level now, which is around 47,000 barrels per day. The Central Asian country of Turkmenistan, after being in the lower 200,000s for a while, has brought themselves up to a new plateau of just over 300,000 barrels per day, coming in at 307,000. Vietnam continuing to wobble around on their general decline downwards. After going up from 214,000 back up to 223, they now dropped back down to 205. And the UK continues to wobble around aimlessly like always, falling under a million down to 971,000, taking a sudden steep drop down to 870, and now suddenly jumping back up to a flat 1 million barrels per day. All right, and before we move over into metals and minerals, the last thing we have in energy, and the thing I most likely titled this video after, U.S. coal consumption for the same comparative period last year is down over 10%. For example, as the latest quarterly coal report was released, the total consumption data coming in for the period from January through September of this past year, 2019, in comparison to the January through September period, the first three quarters of the year for previous years, in 2017, in the first three quarters of the year, the U.S. consumed about 544 million tons of coal. In 2018, across that same period, the U.S. consumed about 519 million tons of coal. And in the same period, the first three quarters of 2019, the U.S. only consumed 456 million tons of coal as countless coal-fired power plants are constantly being shut down and replaced with natural gas-fired power plants. Now shifting over into metals. Gold inventories have climbed back up to 8.7 million ounces in storage. Gold prices have climbed over the course of the week from $1,500 per ounce to a bit over 1550 
Silver inventories increased a little bit from 317 up to 318 million ounces in storage. Silver prices continuing to wobble around $18 per ounce. Platinum inventories still at about 159,000 ounces in storage. Platinum prices over the course of the week going up from $950 to $990 per ounce, almost hitting $1,000 per ounce. But Platinum crossing back over to $1,000 per ounce was one of my calls for this year. One of several included in my uh, energy and resource predictions for 2020 video. A link to that should be appearing in the top corner now for you to hopefully go watch before anything either does happen or doesn't happen. Palladium inventories, which don't necessarily update all too frequently, still at around 52,000 ounces in storage. And palladium prices climbing quite a bit, up from around 1900 to $1,987 per ounce, and there was no real movement in rare earth prices over the course of the week. So, going on with our regular base metals, aluminum inventories gradually decreased from 1.48 down to 1.47 million tons in storage, and aluminum prices wobbled around $1,800 per ton. Nickel inventories continued increasing a little bit, up to 153,000 tons in storage. And nickel prices dropped a bit back under $14,000 per ton, down to around $13,700. Lead inventories finally changed from 67,000 tons in storage. Actually dropped down now to 66,000 tons in storage. And lead prices dropped a bit from around $1,940 down to around $1,900 per ton. And zinc inventories continue dropping in danger of going under 50,000 tons, dropping from 52,000 down to 51,000 tons in storage. A far, far cry down from the 1 million tons in storage that zinc inventories were at at their height years ago. And zinc prices over the course of the week just wobbled around $2,300 per ton. All right, that's about it for this week. Thank you, anybody and everybody who stuck around. If you enjoyed hearing everything, please like the video, as always. Subscribe if you're not, usual stuff. If you want to help me, especially in real life, uh, the paypal.me link is down in the description below. But that's that. Regardless of whatever becomes of me, may God bless you all, and I will see you all around next time.